everybody! Welcome to my new show where I tell you stories from around the world from the comfort of my home. Today I'm taking you to an experimental community, somewhere I really wish I was quarantined right now. Imagine a city with no law, no religion or racism. A town where everybody is treated equally and earns the same salary. So people in this community can do whatever they like. Some make art all day, others meditate. They believe in working for the community but doing what they love. It's a cashless society, they have zero crime rate here and it's called a human experiment. Can you guess what I'm talking about guys? I'll give you a hint. It's in India. The second clue, it's in South India. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about Oroville. So Oroville was established by a French lady called Marissa Alfaza. Very interesting. She was a yogi and she wanted to make an experimental town. A town where there was no religion, no politics, but people from all over the world could come together and live in peace and harmony. So my day started in the youth center where kids and adults were just painting and playing. Now they say about Oroville that it's a place for youth that never ages and it was so true because people were just so free doing whatever they liked making that art. It was beautiful. So 3,000 residents from about 60 countries live in this adult playground. They have pizza nights, they paint, they play games all day and they make art. It's really one of the most interesting places I've ever been to. Imagine, have you heard of Burning Man? It's like that, but all year round. And it's in India. They have 10 schools here. Some schools don't have a campus. Kids can just walk around and learn as they walk and do their thing. And some schools don't have a curriculum. Kids can just study whatever they want. I wish I grew up in Auroville. So after that, I went to Mathri Mandir, which is the place of worship, but there's no religion on Auroville. So they believe in meditation here, but they do not believe in prayers. No prayers, no incense, no candles, no idols. The only rule here in the Matri Mandir is silence, to go within. It's beautiful. It took 37 years to make that big dome and it's magnificent from the inside. They did not allow me to take my camera in, so I could not shoot it for you. But believe me, that is the one place in my life that actually stood still, sat still with no thoughts. And there is nothing in this world I've seen that's like the inside of the Matri Mandir. If you get a chance, you have to go there. Oroville is such a fascinating place, no? Because it's owned by India, it is in India, but its monthly budget comes from contributions from its residents that have come from about 60 countries and it also gets contributions from UN and UNESCO because it's this experimental society. So then after Matri Mandir I went and had lunch and the lunch is prepared in a solar kitchen. Can you imagine it's made with the heat of the sun? Amazing. And it was this beautiful vegetarian simple food and I had such great conversations with people from all over the world. So how does the community work? I was told that every Aurovillian, no matter what they do, if you're a sweeper, a doctor, a teacher, a designer, everyone makes the same salary, which is just 12,000 rupees a month. Food, healthcare, everything is taken care of. Oh, even apartments. Aurovill runs on trust. So it's a cashless society. You don't have to carry cash around. You just give them a number. Everybody has an account number. You give them that account number and you get your groceries and you get your supplies. So Auroville belongs to nobody. It belongs to humanity on the whole. But to live here, you must serve the divine consciousness. After lunch, I went and met a man named Aurelio. And I have to say, Aurelio is one of the most interesting men I have ever met in my life. See, in Auroville, you're allowed to just create and play. And this man has made a sound garden. He's made these huge instruments with the help of all the local communities and the villagers. And, oh my God, just check it out. Let's enter the sound garden.
name? Hi Prakash, how are you? I'm very well. Do you work here with Aurelio? <laughs> this is better than this. After that, he asked me if I wanted to have a sound bath. I was like, what's a sound bath? So he took me to a room and made me lie down on this bed which had a harp underneath it and then crazy in his shop and I bought all these little instruments that you see around my home. God bless you, God bless you. <laughs> bought this from Aurelio. So my house is filled What does that sound like? Yes. Courtesy Aurelio, courtesy Oravo After all that sound healing I got really hungry So I went to one of those beautiful hip cafes There are so many of those in Oravo With healthy, yummy, delicious foods what I feel I respect most about Auroville is that the community cares about the surrounding villages. They actually give work to the surrounding villages. Like Aurelio was giving work to the villagers and they were making all these beautiful instruments. And then I walked into this place uh, where they were making these baskets and like all the villagers were sitting there and making the baskets and they support the local communities and sell it and these villagers earn a good living so that's beautiful and by the way if you're a college student you can intern then I drove down to the beach and took a surf lesson <laughs> and fell a million times and the surf instructors were all from Oravo soon it was time for the hippie market and dance party and so off I went and I had a great time. There were Aurevillians singing and And where will they go? The culture's no more than the remnants of a genetic code. The star dancing, all dressed up, kids running around, so free. Everyone is so free over there. Well, I had such a great time. And the food, the food was so good and it was all so natural. And that's where I met Krishna. Krishna is married to an Indian woman and he has a farm on Auroville and they make all these Everybody's, you know, life was organic, you yeah. know, go back 40, 50 years ago, it was normal yeah. You know, your grandparents, they, organic was normal yeah. It isn't about organic farming This place is very specifically about trying to reconnect a society with their most essential foundational needs, you know, which is food Grow all the vegetables themselves and he makes these beautiful dishes and that's where I eat. That was such a beautiful day. It was a perfect day. And as I sit here in my home, I'm just thinking about Oravo. So what do you guys think? What if the whole world was like Oravo? Would you like to live in a place like Oravo? Would you like to be there now? Please write in the comments below. Also remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon.